let's jump into the first topic on this week's uh, broadcast ahead of week 16 of the NFL season. Um, we're going to focus on Brandon Staley and the Chargers first off, Mark. Like, why is the question? And we're, we're not going to go into the whole Herbert talk here. The one thing I will say is about Herbert is they have got a two to three year window now before they must pay the man. They have that low cap room for Justin Herbert at the minute. They need to make use of that. Brandon Staley, you would think at this point or just around this point last year when the game against the Raiders happened in Las Vegas, you would think that he learned his lesson in terms of his management of this team and the mistakes that he has made. And he has, to be fair to Brandon Staley, he does try on certain occasions to own up when he's wrong. They've had numerous injuries this season. This is a massive period for him now going into the next month because if the Chargers don't make the playoffs... Do you think he continues going forward? Because for me, with the talent that he has on both the offense and defense, with the off-season pickups that Tim and Tom Telesco have made, I'm sorry, the minimum expectation for this team is not to get into the playoffs. The minimum expectation for this team is a divisional game in the playoffs, surely. And then next year, they should be looking at a championship game because of the talent that they have. And frankly, the small window that they have in terms of playing different players that aren't Justin Herbert over the next two to three years. You're spot on with absolutely everything you say. So much so that I want to jump in when you're because there's so much is going <laughs> off in my head as you say it, Michael. Because absolutely they should be competing for those kind of accolades. And they're I I feel as far as I'm concerned, they're a year behind already. He's only two years into the job. He has a seventeen and fourteen record. They barely missed the playoffs last year, but they should have been in the playoffs last year. Look at the superstars that they have on the team. I mean, hey, we talk about the Chiefs and Michaela, you say that they're lacking in some star power at certain areas. The Chargers have Justin Herbert, who should be known, you know, sorry, don't need to go too much into Herbert. They have Keenan Allen. They have Mike Williams. They have Austin Eckler. On the defense, they have stars like Bosa and Derwin James, who are like top three in their position. And that's my problem with the Chargers, that they have no excuses. When they took on Brandon Staley, they knew that he was a defensive minded guy and that hasn't, you know, helped them now as it's gone forward. I know you can say well, what Steve Wilkes is doing. It shows that defensive minded guys can also be productive on offense, just like we see Patricia doing in New England at the moment. But when it comes to what this LA Chargers outfit is. They've started to rise again in power rankings, say, but I was so down them and they were in the bottom, bottom half for so long this year because, and this is my stat of the week, this is what you're going to see come up as a graphic sometime on PF Ireland or Pro Football Ireland, that they've had five wins by less than a field goal. Their average margin of victory has been four points. Their average margin of loss has been eight points. And against teams above 500, they're two and five. So when you're talking about teams that like they've lost the Chiefs twice and we say, oh, yeah, they just lost by the field goal. But then they lost to the Jags by 18 points. They lost to the 49ers by six points. They even lost to the Raiders by seven points. The teams that we want to see them beat, they haven't beaten. Their only impressive win this year has been against the Miami Dolphins a couple of weeks ago and it was by six points. They their other big win was the Texans by 10 points. And. I suppose it all comes back to how were they just getting across the line? I mean, like I just said there, there was the whatever five games that it's by a field goal or less. They've just scraped across the line against the Cardinals by a point. They scraped across against the Browns by two points. And it always comes down and Stady admitted it after the Dolphins game about the energy around Justin Herbert that you can definitely believe in him. But it's we always come out saying, whoa, what a play by Justin Herbert. Imagine they were making those plays on a Patrick Mahomes level. When we see Patrick Mahomes like dump a ball off or have a really weird angle of a thro- throw, well, at least they're probably 10 points up when the Chiefs are doing that. Whereas when Justin Herbert's doing it, great and all as it is, he should be doing it from a much more comfortable position where they're competing for division titles, not seeing the Chiefs with three weeks to go, three games to go, clinching another AFC West. This was the year that they were supposed to step up when they, you know, got your Cleo Max on defense. I know they've had their injuries. Everyone has had their injuries. Their toughest is definitely Rashawn Slater. I mean, at left tackle, we've seen Herbert under pressure. But it's like, yeah, but Herbert's still been getting off the, getting the ball off. Even the pressure hasn't been what's the problem with him. So when we start, start talking about Brandon Staley, the point that I want to agree most with you there is he doesn't just get into the playoffs and save his job. He has to compete in the playoffs. It's not good enough. They have to, especially with the way it's set up for them now. You said the next month is going to be important. We said that a month ago. 
that the next three games are going to be important. And that's what I'm saying. They scraped the boy against the Cardinals. They beat the Raiders. They just beat the Titans by three points over the weekend in a less than convincing fashion as well. So I think it's definitely frustrating what Brandon Staley is doing. I was one of those people that was in on him even at the start of the season. I know the storyline is kind of dragging on, but there's two coaches I'll compare him to. Um, one was from his own coaching year and it was Nick Sir- Sirianni because Nick Sirianni had that awful press conference at the start. Straight away, you put him on, I suppose, ice skates. And he has shown out with the Eagles this year. He has, in year two, turned them around and they look awesome. And then the other one is Zach Taylor, who is probably more comparable. After two years, we have Stady right now, 17 and 14. After two years, Zach Taylor was 6, 25 and 1. And he was definitely on the fence. But then they go to the Super Bowl last year. So maybe that points to, well, you can give him one more year if you really believe that he could do it in year three, just like um, Zach Taylor was able to do. But as far as I'm concerned, that he's holding them back. They have far too much talent and a ticking clock, like you said, when it comes to Justin Herbert, that his rookie contract has absolutely, absolutely been wasted. But not only has his rookie contract been wasted, a super, maybe it's a bit top heavy, but a super talented roster has also been completely wasted. Michaela, the Chargers just going to sort of add to what Mark said there. Chargers have a 79% chance um, at 8 and 6 of making the playoffs at the time of recording. They play the Colts in Monday Night Football, they play the Rams in Week 17, and they play the eliminated Broncos in Denver in Week 18. Now, I do not think for the life of me that that game will be flexed, but I'm starting to think now that they're going to mess up in one of these in one of these next two games where everyone's going to be watching that game in Denver in Week 18 going, oh my God, could they mess up again? Where potentially, and we don't know at the time we're recording what the Broncos are going to do with Russell Wilson. Um, he didn't play last week. I personally biasly think that he shouldn't play again this season. So if he does play with a good team, there's a situation for Staley. Russell Wilson's trying to prove himself to the fans. There's so many different elements here. You've got that game on Monday night, but it's must-win situation for him over the next few weeks, not just for the immediate short-term future, but for his job as well. And as Mark rightly said there, you know, we have been saying this all season. But the pressure's massively on now. There's no point in sitting eight and six and finishing off eight and nine. No, but I think looking at their next few games that are coming up, the Colts, the Rams and the Broncos, they should easily beat them. I know Mark's been saying that they've been barely getting over the line, but they've kind of come back in on them in on themselves, you know, over the last couple of games. You know, beating Tua and the Dolphins was a big win for them. And I think it's given them a little bit of confidence. So they can go and they can beat those mediocre teams and, you know, ensure their uh, place in the playoffs I think Staley is a little bit I think he's getting to a little too much pressure like he's only in his second year there's always going to be growing pains with with head coaches who are just starting off um with a team but they didn't get out they haven't been in the playoffs since 2018 and I think people I just think the the star power that Justin Herbert has I think has put a lot of pressure on the team because they're like Herbert is like a top five quarterback he should be in the playoffs every year but you have to kind of forget they didn't have a uh like they had Philip Rivers obviously before that but they it was they needed to rebuild a little bit and they have and they they do have an amazing roster like they have a lot of talent and in fairness to them they did have a lot of injuries this year they had Mike Williams and they've came down that was their two top wide receivers they were injured so Austin Eckler and Justin Herbert had to carry the load a little bit and then Joey Boza is obviously injured as well. Like that, that's one of their best defensive players um, after Khalil Mack and Derwin James. So I, I think they're going to be grand now going into the playoffs. I, um, I don't think Staley's going to lose his, lose his job this year, but if especially if they get into the playoffs, because like I said, they haven't been since twenty eighteen. But if they go next year, he's going to be there next year, and they're kind of struggling again, even with this roster all healthy. Um, and they're kind of maybe, I think they could maybe get to the divisional round this year. But if they go into the playoffs next year and they only make wild card rounds, even with everyone healthy, I think he could lose his job next year. But if they're going constantly into divisional rounds this year, next year, and their record's a little bit better, then then obviously he's fine. But yeah, I I, I think it's too soon to call quits on him. Interesting, interesting. I think it's all over again, isn't it, Michael? <laughs> like he overstayed his welcome. Like, now at the end of the I day, I was in his last game. No, I really. It was, yeah, what, in Denver. 
how did this last game go? They were 21 points up and they didn't, uh, they weren't able to finish it out. Like I'm being sarcastic there, but like that was their thing with, <laughs> say, uh, with Lynn is that he could never see the game out. And, uh, you know, you, it was always put on the coach that the talent was there, whether it was Rivers or H- Herbert or whatever, the talent was always there. They seemed to always have a banged up offensive line, but even with the all pros that they had in 2018, um, that year, then what happened to Desmond King and all these players afterwards that it's, very frustrating. I know there's not as many Chargers fans as there is for other teams for different reasons. Um, the owners have been a bit messy there, what or how they Dean Dean Spanos, mm. how the Spanos has um, looked after things and the move from San Diego and stuff. But it's just how does history keep repeating itself in LA or for the LA Chargers? There's not too many NFL fans in LA. Period, and we can talk about that in a different podcast in the off season. 